I was almost awake at 8 o'clock and then I fell asleep again. Like, this is what I get for trying to watch a video. Um, I gotta sort myself out. I got some stuff I get done. And I need to set up this box. And, uh, remember to write down anything that goes into it. Oh, what is my hair doing? This is gonna take a little bit of sorting out and make it look good. Not like yesterday. I woke up and... Wow. Um, I completely spaced, but I actually have to run into town. Uh, and... I forget why. I'm thinking eggs. Well, uh, that was fast. And so was breakfast. Three eggs, two pieces of solar bread toast. Okay, donation box is set up, and here we go. This is not counting the two um, pairs of jeans that went in the garbage today because they were a mess. It's 3.10, and I am driving around in town trying to get over to one of the craft stores because of course I am, and... Um, I realized that while I was taking stuff out of a drawer, I have got this whole big drawer full of stuff that I can't wear because I've gotten too small for it or because it's absolute garbage and that's why it's in there and not hanging in the closet. So under a pair of size 15 jeans, which are now in the box, and um, the Two pairs of jeans that have gotten so shredded I can't wear them anyway, which are going in the trash. And one more pair of jeans that are small enough and only have a rip in one knee that are going to become cutoffs because, yes, I will absolutely rock cutoffs in the summertime if I am still large enough to wear those. Granted, my hips haven't changed that much, so maybe. Uh, under all of those, I found a pair of size nine jeans that I had actually gotten recently and so those are back in my rotation so it's it's actually good that I'm getting rid of some stuff so I will be able to see what all I have. This is good for two reasons. One, what I can wear will be more available to me and two, I will not be buying things with an unrealistic expectation of what I have and what I don't have. So, I'm finding it really, really positive uh, getting some of this stuff set up to come out of my room. I gotta slow down for this semi. Okay, they are lined up and I'm good. So I had ordered my oldest a couple of things that were on his list. Well, one thing was on his list. One thing was just, uh, I refuse to get the other things on your list because yikes. But, um, the package got lost, had the wrong shipping information. They told me they would gotten sent to Fort Worth by mistake. And, uh, I had gotten a refund for that about 30 bucks worth of stuff and um, I've just now received that lost package this morning so I'm gonna have to get in contact with customer service be like look you lost my stuff but it was here well before my kid could receive it for Christmas so you know we're good I'm gonna mark this stuff as probably being from Santa and then uh, cuz it's um it's not the big stuff. It's not the pricey stuff. It's not the Steam gift cards. Right? And, um... 
I gotta figure out something else though for my other kiddo. From Santa. Gotta have some stuff from Santa. I made enchiladas for dinner and then there was a really major delay, which you're gonna love the story of, and they were amazing. They were so good. It's 2 a.m. and I really thought that I was gonna get this video edited and I honestly started at about midnight. I thought I was gonna get this whole thing edited and then um do my birch box opening. Nope. Uh, no, the birch box has fallen off the side of my bed toward the wall, and, um, I have no reason to fish it out right now, so that's just, that's going to have to wait. Okay, I had to fuel up, because you guys are going to want to hear this. This is so fun. For dinner tonight, it was supposed to be some real basic, um, out of the freezer case lasagna. And my mom has, uh, not lasagna, enchiladas. Um, lasagna, they had plenty of. But my mom asked me to just grab that while I was picking up some water from my dad's CPAP machine. Not a problem, right? Or at least it shouldn't be because enchiladas are prevalent as I live in Texas. But it was not to be because I get there and it's like, okay, look, I'll eat cheese enchiladas, I'll eat chicken enchiladas. I'll eat chicken enchiladas with the green sauce. I'm not picky about my enchiladas. Other people in my family, they would eat the cheese enchiladas with the meat sauce on them. But they would really, really, really prefer the beef enchiladas. Now, if anybody's wondering, my dad seems to have given up on uh, low carbing after I pretty much put it right out there for him. And there may have been alcohol or pain medications involved at the time. That he was pretty much running himself into the ground with trying to be low carb because everything he likes to eat is low carb. And that maybe he should just do calories in, calories out instead. I don't know if he's counting. I don't know if he's tracking. I, I do know that he sees that I've had a major difference. And I did tell him that I was doing that as well as being low carb that I'm going to continue counting my calories. I don't know. I don't know where he's at. I go pick up the enchiladas. And they had, they had a few, but they did not have beef enchiladas. So I run over to the other store with uh, cream and provolone and yogurt in the back of my car. And I am just like going through trying to find some beef enchiladas and there are none there they've got so many things of lasagna that you get stacked it to the ceiling and with the big warehouses but no no beef enchiladas anywhere and i was even checking like the single servings because it was like if i can get like three of those and just pop them in the oven no no beef enchiladas so that ticked me off we've got so much going on right now we just need something fast and easy no I had expected to just pop in, grab one item, self-checkout, and go. No. I did not have an arm basket. I did not have a cart. I just was gathering things. I went and got corn tortillas. Uh, I got two cans of enchilada sauce. I got two pounds of ground beef. I got a can of refried beans. I got, um, uh... Mexican rice. The only thing I didn't grab were the enchiladas was cheese. I mean, I think I've mentioned I got the refried beans. Okay, so there was the rice and beans, which is, there's something about rice and beans when put together in the same meal, they make a complete protein, so it's actually like, it's healthy for you. Uh, the same, there's a similar thing that carrots and peas do that they, when combined, it gives you both parts of a, a protein. And so I do try to be mindful of these things. Um, so I get home. I had texted my dad that there was no, uh, you know, frozen beef enchiladas. And he's trying to tell me, go ahead and call your mother. And I'm like, she's getting her phone 
handled and she's out scouring well I didn't tell him this part but she's out buying him something and um she just hasn't gotten it she couldn't find the one she wants to get him and um I'm like I'm you know I'm I'm pretty much done here I'm gonna figure it out and we'll just save her the trip and I check out I get home I throw together the um the taco seasoning and the ground beef and a skillet and I am trying like crazy I think it was visible in the pictures to get these little corn tortillas to roll properly but I guess I needed to heat them up better or get a, a thicker variation but they were cracking and they were coming apart and I was I have lived in Texas I have not moved out of Texas I have been a solid resident of Texas since the age of five and you would think that I would know how to make enchiladas but the tortillas were cracking and it's irritating the heck out of me I love enchiladas so much um the the taco seasoned meat goes in the tortilla you are supposed to roll it but really all i could get to do was fold so i've got soft corn tortillas folded over with the next one in the row holding down the top flap of tortilla and i manage about eight of these not very long i i think i think they were eight inch tortilla not eight inch um like four inch tortillas it's like a couple of rows in each of these pans as per the picture and then just over the whole thing trying to get every little inch of exposed corn tortilla covered in enchilada sauce that doesn't actually wind up being very much enchilada sauce but it is vital so I get um I get that done and I'm keeping them warmed up I'm texting my mom who can't respond because her phone screen is busted that uh, we need shredded cheese and I didn't realize that while I was at the two different grocery stores that we need for the enchiladas specifically and she already told me during a call in the first grocery store that she can't really um, respond to me but she can see my texts and if she needs to respond back then she would have to call and everything is busy and crazy right now and and she knows that um, Phone calls and talking on the phone are actually a major trigger for my anxiety, so we try not to do that. I um, I'm keeping those warm. I'm getting the the refried beans warmed up. I'm getting the uh, the Mexican rice made, and I'm trying to keep her posted in case maybe she missed one of my messages because occasionally I'll send her a text, and she will. Uh, you know, accidentally clear the notification and not realize that I've sent the text. This happens a lot. Like, it'll go hours without getting a response. Uh, whatever. Um, she gets home. And I've kept everything hot. And I'm worried that, you know, the enchilada sauce is looking kind of dry. I've never had enchiladas made where there's any time between the sauce going on and then the cheese going on and I'm like I'm worrying that this is gonna dry out the sauce all over the tortillas it's gonna get too crunchy you know but um it, it was fine and I tell her as she's setting stuff down and I'm digging into this uh big insulated bag that she's got for this giant there was it was a five pound bag of shredded cheese because apparently we do that around here um, I'm telling her, you know, everything's ready to go. And, uh, the minute that the cheese is melting on top, we're gold. It's dinner. So don't worry about how late it is. And, um, so she's like, oh, that's perfect. Right. And I was, of course, I was, I was kind of manic today. So I was cleaning up as I went. So after dinner, when I pretty well crashed, um, there was not a whole lot left 
that needed to be taken care of. So, dinner happened. Um, dishes were not complicated. I really overate because those enchiladas were so good. And we don't have enchiladas enough, but I guess when I do have enchiladas, I pack them in, convince myself to stop, check that I have I have definitely gone over my calories for the day by about a hundred. I'm fine with that though because usually I'm under by about a hundred and so technically I'm still in that green target zone. And uh yeah, I think I was at twelve eighty six. But um I really did consider going back for another plate. <laughs> like um I eat anymore my stomach is gonna just burst open we're gonna have that scene from alien with the chest hugger baby popping out of john hurt no thank you and um got a couple of cups of tea instead chai tea even with uh stevia sweetener zero calories perfect it's been a bit of a long day i am hoping stay focused enough to mess around with the bathroom floor tomorrow with the roll of flooring that I've gotten. This should be fun. I hope to have some pictures for you guys. I have been watching Schitt's Creek this evening. Um, that is why you may have noticed that the picture of my dinner was on my lap. And I caught a Christmas episode of it. That was fun. I have no idea how I'm going to edit this down so that it'll fit everything in. Maybe I don't have to. So I have some more stuff I've got to wrap. I don't think I want to leave the house tomorrow. Possibly Wednesday either. I did miss the Great Convergence con conjunction. I keep trying to say Convergence instead of Conjunction because the Great Conjunction is that thing from the Dark Crystal and that whole movie um led to very traumatizing nightmares when I was a child I mean I can watch it now but anything even remotely related to that movie that is exactly where my brain goes oh I think I did pretty good uh keeping track of what went in the donation box and what needed to go in the garbage I am considering what to do with my supernatural pajamas in a size extra large because who thought that was a good size to buy me i have never worn an extra large or at least i have never fit in an extra large i have worn extra large stuff um my really splotchy long sleeve shirt which is one of the few long sleeve shirts i've got is actually an extra large but I per picked it up on clearance knowing it would be super baggy even at my heaviest I never fit into an extra large it was only a large considering some of my t-shirts not fandom ones but others maybe time to let go of I've got a few other you know non supernatural fandom t-shirts that um, I really enjoy and I don't think I'm any Parting with any of those. But at the same time, I don't know. I keep coming back to that plastic compass shirt. Like I wore it today. It's and I think it kind of dawned on me today that that is my favorite shirt, the compass one. And part of it has to do with the material. It's very thin and lightweight. It's got that design on the front that is actually not symmetrical. Which is good because the bone structure in both my face and my shoulders and my spine is not symmetrical. So it doesn't look like it's sitting wrong. It looks like it's supposed to be sitting wrong. I don't know if that even makes a lick of sense. And if I wear a black bra, it'll show through. Which is a little bit fun for me, I guess. But it fits so well. I was putting away laundry earlier and realized that I have no idea where my shorts are. I have no idea where they've gone. I thought that they were hanging on the hooks of the 
hanger that I use to hang like all my um, tank tops. But I guess not. I guess I'm, I'm trying to think where I may have put them. It's well after 2 a.m. and I have got to call it a night and try to sleep. Maybe. I've been reading up. Apparently the uh, monoliths count is now at 87 and they're like all over the world. I'm sure that whatever group has planned this, at least some of them have got to be copycats. And man, would I love to make just like a little teeny tiny one and put it in some forced perspective photos to make it look like it's been in, like there have been monoliths in places in my area that nobody could possibly vouch for because it never really was there. Like, um, let's make it look like this is sitting on, like, in this little dent in the ground. Okay, click. Okay, and it was never there. And there's no, you know, little footprint of the thing. And, um, just some fake photos. <laughs> I'm being hilarious. Also, what the heck is with this? This is like those clowns back in, I guess it was 2016. And they're, like would chase people with knives and and then just stopped and we have no idea why and then earlier this year the pentagon was like oh by the way ufos and we were like okay when that happened i really thought this that would be similar to like um like if aliens made contact and you know started up or trade with, you know, the average people, you know, started, uh, opening shops of alien technology, chatting with the local governments, and then, like, a month to, to, you know, I don't know, 50 years later, government pops up with, oh, and by the way, aliens. <laughs> aliens. <laughs> I may have hit that point where I'm so tired everything is funny. Probably. So, I guess I have got to call it a night. I have no idea how I'm going to get this uh, edited shorter. Hopefully I'll just be able to take a lot of little chunks out of this. Or maybe I'll just speed it up really fast and you guys can try to figure out what I'm saying with the voice of a chipmunk. That could be fun. Anyway, thank you for sharing my day with me.